So based on what you were just saying, what can we do to be more aware of the subtleties? Because I feel like I know there are signs that are happening constantly, and I just feel like I'm missing them. I must well, be, because I feel like I need to be patient. It's about tuning. Mm. You can be as patient as you have time to be, but if you've got your tuner set on the wrong station, you're not going to hear what's being broadcast on the station that you want to hear from. And so it's not about patience, it's about tuning. The thing about resistance is, you see, beliefs are active vibrations within you. So as you witness something, and there's an active vibration within you as you watch it, as you talk about it later, there's an active vibration. As you remember it from the past or imagine it in the future, there's an active vibration. And so an active vibration about something that you don't want will hinder the signal about something that you do want. So that's just not good tuning. So the obvious thing is just shut that channel down. In other words, just stop. You got to deactivate those things that are in the way. But the thing that makes that a little tricky is that while you're thinking about what you're not going to think about, you're thinking about it. So when you say, I'm not going to think about that anymore, you're thinking about that right now. And every time you say, I'm not going to think about it, you think about it more until it becomes a stronger and stronger and stronger hindrance to what you do want. So the only way that we know of to deactivate something unwanted is to focus upon something wanted. But law of attraction gets in your way with that because law of attraction is so busy responding to the vibration that you've already got active that it makes it almost impossible in some cases to think about the other end of that stick because this is so dominant. So you can't not think about it because law of attraction just keeps dishing up more, showing you more in your now, both of wanted and unwanted, by the way, showing you more in your now, helping you remember things from the past, gathering it from far and wide, anything that's active within you, law of attraction saying, here's some more, here's some more, here's some more, here's some more. So the way we would encourage you to deactivate something is by quieting your mind altogether. It helps when you sleep. But the thing about sleeping is when you wake up, you usually pick up where you left off. Even though the momentum subsided, the potential for that active belief is still really great. And so when you awaken, you could wake up and immediately focus on other things. And if you could do that, you could in time dominate your vibration with more wanted things. That's doable. It's a little difficult. The easiest way is to quiet your mind altogether. And the way you quiet your mind is by meditating. And by meditating, we mean focusing on something that's not really an active thought. So it requires, or it's helpful, in the beginning especially, to sit in an environment where there's not a lot going on. Quiet room helps. Comfortable clothing. And focus upon something subtle, like Esther likes to listen for a sound. Hear that in this room? It's the motor of the air conditioning, but can you hear it? And the reason that that's a particularly good thing is because it's usually steady. So if you just listen, just sort of enjoy what your ears can find with that. Or you can breathe, noticing your breathing in and out. Sometimes you can even find a ringing in your own ear or a sound in your own mind. But it's better if it's a steady sound, something that doesn't change and therefore doesn't distract you. And if you will focus there for just a little bit, you'll notice that your body will feel different as your mind sort of winds down and you don't give your mind an opportunity to pick up on those vibrations that it normally would because you're focused pointedly on something that isn't interesting but does have your attention. It's not so interesting that it takes you off on tangents but it's interesting enough because it is something that you can focus upon. It is a thing. In other words, it's a manifestation. It's a sound that is manifesting, but it just doesn't amount to that much. As you focus upon that, you'll quiet your mind. And as you quiet your mind, a really interesting thing happens. Your tuner rises to the frequency of your inner being. It's like the cork 
when you hold it under the water isn't floating, but when you let go, it does. So it's like letting go of that cork and your vibration begins to rise, which now puts you in sync. You know how a moment ago we were talking about how there is the point of attraction of your inner being, your inner mind, your soul source. And then there's a point of attraction of whatever you've got going on with your habits of thought. Well, when you quiet your own habits of thought, then your inner mind becomes dominant. So now you're right there with your inner being and your inner being is wise enough not to begin introducing thoughts to you that are going to take you back over here. Your inner being will speak very generally to you at first because there's no point in talking about that issue that you've got going on because as soon as your inner being brings it up, you're going to go right back to that lower vibration because your habit of thought is so practiced there. So it will be more general. It will be more like a feeling of well-being. Sometimes you describe it as floating or euphoric or peaceful or satisfaction or contentment. It's just this subtle sense of well-being. Sometimes you'll have the sensation that you sort of want to move with some sort of rhythm that's coming from somewhere. It's just this place of quiet allowing of yourself to resonate and be bathed by and touched by and integrated with this high frequency of who you really are. And once you do that, 15 minutes on Sunday and then on Monday and then on Tuesday and then on Wednesday, don't go longer than that. Don't ask your mind to be quiet. It doesn't want to be. So don't push it until you're unpleasant. Just try it again tomorrow and try it again tomorrow. It might take most of the 15 minutes to get there. You might only be there a minute or two or three. You might get there and want to stay there a little longer just because it feels so good. But what you'll notice after a few days of that soft allowing of your vibration to rise, you'll begin to receive subtle thoughts because now you're in the receiving mode. Your mind is not active anymore. So you're not going to be thinking of things. You'll begin to receive these subtle thoughts of your inner being. And the reason we say subtle thoughts is because your inner being is wise enough to know what your path of resistance is. Esther remembers when she was a child and her older sister would become so frustrated with Esther because Esther never seemed to understand when was not a good time to ask daddy for stuff. Because Jeannie understood his moods better. She'd been around longer. And Esther just kind of blundered in and asked for things at the wrong time. And then, of course, they wouldn't happen. In fact, trouble would usually ensue. And it took a long time for Jeannie to teach Esther, just cool your jets, just wait a little bit. Now's not the time. Trust me, now's not the time. Well, your inner being knows when the time is for you. Your inner being knows when you're agitated about something or when you're open to something. Your inner being knows what your beliefs are about everything that matters to you. Your inner being knows what things you want and what things you really don't believe and what things you want and what things you're not quite so much in the way of. So your inner being will offer you impulses of thought. And when you receive the thought, you'll think you're thinking it, but you're not thinking it. And you know how you'll notice the difference between whether you're thinking the thought or whether you're receiving the thought from your inner being. When you receive the thought from your inner being, it always feels good. It feels like a good idea. It feels like something that you want to do. It's resistance free. And Esther, at first, when she began receiving these thoughts, she would think, that doesn't seem like a very important thought. It seems like Source would be thinking about more important things. But then she realized that Source is just offering her the thought of least resistance, the thought that she could receive, that she wouldn't immediately begin contradicting with beliefs that are in the way. And so after a while, once you meditate for 15 or 20 minutes every morning so that you sort of set the tone of that, then what you begin to notice is that you don't have to be in a state of completely quieted mind in order to receive an impulse that's really a good idea. It's like when you drive, often, you don't realize it, but often when you drive, you are in a sort of meditative state because the road's sort of doing that to you and the fact that you can't really be productive, leave your devices aside in any real way. And so your mind is sort of in that loose place of receiving. And often you receive an impulse to change lanes or to speed up or to slow down or to take an exit. And that is absolutely a thought that is being generated and offered to you by your inner being. And you are the receiver of that thought. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes, we'd meditate every day. And we would orient ourselves 
to the subtleties of that inner mind, that inner being, until it's so not subtle that you're actually receiving movement. So not subtle that you're actually knowing unequivocally that that's the way you want to go. And so I've tried that and I've, it is hard for me to meditate because my mind is always going so with tons of thoughts. I'm sure a lot of people are that way. How do you stop yourself from, if you've done it for a week, you start that measurement phobia, like I've done this for a week and I have, feel like I haven't felt it. Esther was talking to someone the other day who was saying something like that. And Esther said to this person the following words, which then that person really benefited by this because it made them realize that it is something that you're doing deliberately. Esther said, sometimes, depending on what's going on, I have to release a thought and then another thought and then another thought and then another thought. Sometimes your mind is just really active on things and you just have to start over again and start over again and start over again. What was that I was listening for? Oh yeah, there it is. And then all of a sudden your mind's wandering. What was that I was listening for? Oh yeah, there it is. And then all of a sudden your mind's wandering. What was that thing I was listening for? In other words, just stay after it because it doesn't have to happen much before you make the connection between you've quieted your mind and you did get a piece of that so all that's in the 15 minutes even if you feel like i'm restarting and restarting and if you've been sitting there for 15 minutes which is the amount of time that you've allowed if you need to then leave and go somewhere and you realize that you haven't reached it you may get more and more aggravated as you say i'm not there yet i'm not there yet i'm not there yet don't do that to yourself just say enough for today and get up and go but it is our promise to you that when you sit to focus upon some sound your mind will quiet your mind will quiet and your inner being will help you too <laughs> Your inner being's right there with you. Your inner being is helping you in this vibrational adjustment. You've just got to allow it. And so just be easy about it. Don't make it work. And don't keep telling the story that it's hard. Because if while you're in your not meditating state, you say, I can't meditate. I just can't meditate. It's hard for me to meditate. My mind won't quiet. Well, then it's going to be hard for you when you sit to do that because you've just activated a vibration that is working against you. So begin saying things such as, when you go to bed at night, do you toss and turn for hours? Usually because my mind's going about stuff, yeah. So that's not a really good idea to use <laughs> that. So I try to do a lot of appreciation. And do you ever watch television? I've, tried, I've really cut back on all the Do you ever watch and, television? Um, Netflix. Do you ever lose the plot in a movie? Wait a minute, who's that? Do you ever not hear what they said and want to rewind so that you can hear what... Are you ever distracted from something that you're focused upon? Yeah. Well, it's not different from that. Are you ever across the dinner table from someone and you see their mouth moving and you realize you haven't been listening? You haven't been listening. You're smiling and nodding, <laughs> but you haven't been listening. And so you certainly have the ability to focus in the same way that you can tune someone else out, you can tune your own mind out. You can, you just gotta get good at it. You just gotta care about it. And for most, it means you've gotta know that there's a payoff for it. You gotta know that there's value in it. We want you to know that when you are able to quiet your mind, you have access to your inner mind. And when you have access to your inner mind, you have access to the pathways to everything that you want. The best ideas will come from this vibrational reality where your inner being knows every piece of everything that you've ever asked for. And what sequence and combination of them will please you the most right now? And the reason that there is a right now factor is because there is a resistance factor within you that your inner being understands. So your inner being knows how much to offer to you right now that is most likely to be received by you.